Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we are back again with Caitlin Gaffield, a PhD student at Kansas State University. So Caitlin, you've been on the show before, but before we get started, would you mind reminding the audience a little bit about your background? Yeah, so uh, my name's Caitlin. I'm originally from uh, Illinois, where I did both my uh, bachelor's and my master's degree. And my master's was specifically focused in meat science. And then after that, I joined the Applied Swine Nutrition team to pursue my PhD, where I'm about to finish up here in February. Awesome. So I read the series of studies you sent on using acidifiers in the nursery and grow finish stages. So could you summarize what you learned from those studies and how acidifiers can impact the swine industry? Yeah, so part of my dissertation has been looking at the use of in-feed acidifiers through different stages of growth performance. And so specifically, I've looked at two different types of acidifiers, and that would be benzoic acid and sodium diformate. And I have done trials with both of those in the nursery and the grow finish um, stage. And so first, when looking at the benzoic acid um, in nursery, I conducted a feeding program, was, which was very interesting because we took away a unique finding um, that when feeding benzoic acid in the nursery, we needed to really feed that throughout the entire, all three phases of the nursery period. Uh, when we removed that acidifier before the end of the nursery, we, we saw this uh, reduction in growth performance. And so that was definitely an interesting takeaway from um, the benzoic acid and kind of added to some of the other work um, students had done before um, I joined the program. And then we followed that into the grow finish where our group has conducted a couple of different studies looking at benzoic acid and growing finishing pigs. And when we added, uh, looked at benzoic acid in the growing finishing phase, we had conducted a couple of different studies here with our group. And so we see inconsistent results um, in performance. And so in one study, we'll see an improvement in feed efficiency. And then in another study, we actually saw a reduction in feed efficiency. And so we kind of see these inconsistent results specifically. We uh, did both of these studies in commercial settings. And so that's definitely something interesting for us to look more into. And then I also looked at the use of sodium diformate. And so once again, I conducted a nursery trial here at K-State utilizing increasing levels of sodium diformate. And essentially what we saw with that trial is uh, improvements in feed efficiency during those early phases, so phase one and phase two. Uh, but we did not see that translate into phase three or the overall results. So um, trying to look more into how to capture that early feed efficiency improvement we see with sodium diformate. And then again, we uh, carried that over into a commercial study and grow finished with the sodium diformate. And essentially what we saw was improvements in growth performance, average daily gain, um, around after day, day 60 or around um, 82 kilograms in the growing finishing period. So if I was going to summarize all of these studies up, essentially we do see improvements uh, pretty consistent, consistently when adding acidifiers um, in the nursery period, both when, with benzoic and uh, sodium diformate. Uh, but we need to do more research into feeding programs for those different acidifiers to make sure if we want to feed phase one and phase two, when we pull that out, we're not actually causing a little reduction in performance there. And then with the acidifiers in the growing finishing period, uh, more work needs to be done on trying to see how we can capture uh, the benefits and grow uh growth performance a little more consistently. Um, and so some of those aspects can be um, understanding its impacts with uh, protein sources and protein level, um, as well as there's uh, research being done on different aspects of the growth finish to really try to hone in on how to um, get a more consistent response. Gotcha. So from these studies and kind of what you've talked about already, it seems the mode of action is a little bit unclear. Uh, but the general consensus is that it's from the reduced pH um, that causes these effects. Uh, but from the series of studies that you have, which kind of some of them gave a little bit of inconsistent results, um, do you think there could be another factor that could have some sort of influence on why um, 
it benefits these pigs. And maybe because of what you saw, different acidifiers gave a little bit of different responses. Maybe there's some other mechanism in there that's not just solely because of the reduced pH. Yeah. And so um, definitely the pH is something we're looking at. And uh, specifically with acidifiers, that also kind of ties into um, one of my fellow um, graduate students, Ethan, who has been working, looking at ABC4. And so we've definitely been doing some work around acid binding capacity and some of the pH work. However, um, the mode of action for acidifiers um, is not fully understood. And there's definitely multiple other factors that could be at play, um, such as there's some antimicrobial properties that can come uh, with these acidifiers as well. And so there's multiple things such as the reduction in pH, helping maybe some of that protein digestion. There could be some of these antimicrobial properties. And so as we continue this research, um, kind of defining that mode of action is as something that we can look into as well. Gotcha. And so when we're talking about acidifiers, I tend to see more nursery studies than I do grow finish studies. And maybe that's just due to the consistency, um, because as you've seen in your studies in the grow finish, one seemed to work well, and then another study actually had a little bit of the opposite effect and reduced fit, feed efficiency. Um, and in the nursery studies, they most of them at least, at least more consistently, they tend to help the pigs more, the degree to which they help can, that's where they can vary a little bit more. Um, but you see more consistent results in these nursery studies, which is why it's more popular to run those nursery studies or more, more common, I should say, to run the nursery studies than it is on the grow finish. Um, but why do you think that is? Why do you think that the acidifiers are more beneficial in the nursery stage than they are in the grow finish stage? Yeah. And so just like you'd said, we've seen more consistent results, not just our studies here at, at K-State, but across the literature when um, incorporating acidifiers into nurseries, we can see an improvement in performance. Um, however, once we get to that growth finish area, it gets a little bit more inconsistent. And so I think this could be driven by uh, multiple factors. And so uh, one of these factors is definitely the period of stress that nursery pigs going through, as well as their uh, gastrointestinal tract still developing. And so um, kind of due to that different change in diet, they're going to have a reduction in some of the acid sec secretions in the stomach. And so if we can potentially uh, provide these pigs some help through utilizing things like uh, acidifiers or uh, paying attention to aspects such as ABC4, uh, maybe this will provide uh, more benefits in the nursery versus when we get to grow finish and these pigs have um, a greater development of the gastrointestinal tract. And overall, when looking at acidifiers, they really seem to provide some benefit when we are in this like transitional period, um, when maybe pigs are going through a challenge or they're transitioning. And so definitely we can see that captured when they're going through this transition period in the nursery. Combining basic science with real world facilities results in swine nutrition programs that deliver impactful bottom line performance. Hubbard Feeds is focused on helping you achieve your goals and make your life easier along the way. Choose a company that can match your appetite for innovation by visiting hubbardfeeds.com forward slash swine research. Gotcha. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Caitlin, for coming on the show and good luck on your upcoming defense. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yep. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.